<clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Original motherboard number one <clears throat> came with a backup BIOS of F1 right here. I have uh, another board number two. <clears throat> and it has a backup BIOS of F2. Um, it came up in F2, so I'm flashing it back up to F F3G. It just and I've got one count one memory stick. The rest of the memory is right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So flashing it back up to and this is being recorded externally. There's nothing on the machine other than just the single memory stick. <coughs> Losing my voice because I've been not sleeping well trying to get this damn thing to work. And I was rebooting. One thing I've noticed is the USB 2 headers inside the machine apparently are not working. I've got two positioned here. I just moved it over to the set position after upgrading it. I just moved it from the USB. Uh, can't remember, the seat, can't see if it's two or three, whatever it is, on the bottom. Moved it over. Just upgraded it to um, F. Oh. Oh. Delete, delete, delete. Not fast enough. Let me use grub to boot to the <clears throat> the wonderful things of EFI biases is that you can actually boot to a menu and it will pick and go in to the bias from the grub menu okay now we're at F3 okay so now we're at F3 I'm gonna try moving uh, wish I had a couple more cameras hooked up, but I did grab one real quick. So, plugging this USB header into the case USB. Oh, and now it's working. So F2 apparently has issues with initializing. <coughs> the USB headers on this board. Maybe somebody... Like I said, this motherboard number two is acting completely different. With this guy with F1, when it was into F1, I was able to plug USB... Mind you, it's a wireless USB to this mouse and to this keyboard, which works perfectly fine inside the operating system. See? And it's plugged into the case USB 2 header on the on the case and it's now working now that I've reflashed it up to F3G. This number two board acting weird. So now I'm gonna go through the process of uh, the camera here is in, in front of the monitor. You have to bear with me here. <coughs> uh, disabling CSM because I don't need any legacy support. I've got a modern operating system, doesn't need it. One quick thing you need to do is change the pump header to always fully on and leave the rest of them back to their default settings. Go into here. <coughs> it's now saying the voltage is a little on the low side. <coughs> first things first. <coughs> Memory settings. Evo XMP, but force it back down to 21, whatever. That way the cache settings are the 15, 17, 17, 35, which they have on the sheet. Timing, turn this to disable, turn this to disable. I think I saw some place that channel. And uh, voltage. I'll put this at 1.22. Uh, 
There's nothing currently in bus C or D. We're getting it ready for eventually populating it there. Memory is clocked and timed correctly. And memory set to 3.5, not doing anything. What's well, set to auto? So it might auto boost, I don't know. Um, bias, peripherals, turn off RGB fusion. It's a way of seeing when the system re resets. If I turn that off, you can see the, the motherboard. Let me get the camera a little closer. Oops. Now it's on cycle. Go to off. So if I see the color on the BIOS come back to the default red, whatever color it is, I know that it's rolled back to an older BIOS or reset the BIOS. It's just an instant auto. And I out, might as well turn this on so that when it is actually powered off, I can see that the lights are still on. Legacy support enabled. Doesn't really matter if above 4G decoding is enabled or disabled. Turning this on simplifies the memory layout because PCI hardware can then use stuff above the 128 gigabytes as opposed to trying to map hardware uh, someplace else, a window into PCI hardware. This board, I've got another board I want to use with this. It's a video capture card or deck link from Blackmagic, but this was going to be my video workstation. But since I'm having problems and I'm getting off subject, <coughs> chipset. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, let me do a F10, save and exit, which is, uh, before I do it, I'm going to say save and exit. You push this, it goes save and reset. Uh, a cosmetic. I mean, I detect, I'm finding stupid little things in the manual, in the BIOS, just, they should put me on the payroll because I find problems. I am find problems in applications, web, desktop, doesn't matter. I find problems in motherboards. I find problems. But I obviously don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, delete. Get into the BIOS. Now it's saying the voltage is a little high. Only got one module, but as I add stuff, the voltage will tend to drop back down. Oops. And... have hard drive and stuff things so I'm just gonna come over here and say boot to here and do a quick LS LS topo to see if it recognizes NUMA and if it actually properly recognizes 16 on the uh, first node And there we go. As you can see, it recognizes 16 gigs there, nothing there. I was having problems with this thing, was not going into NUMA mode, it was going into unified memory access because something was really screwed up. Uh, insert your other four letter word there. Uh, LS mem. Uh, C16, so power off. Uh, looks like it's down. Get the power switch. I like to hold the power button down. Make sure that the uh, power supply is discharged. Now, there's another module. Put this into position four. It's, it seems to be reasonably seated. On. <coughs> and since I happen to have a certain power management setting, I'm going to have to turn, go back to the default settings to see, det detect if there's any issues. Let me go edit. And oh, let's keep it slow. Take the PCI advanced something power management. I forgot what the oops, flash and then F10. 
So now it's at the default kernel boot up parameters. D message. No error messages with two modules on this. We're on this board, we're gonna put two in. I would get error messages showing up talking about the PCI bus <coughs> new uh, mode uh, node zero. Oops, didn't want to minimize that. LS Topo. And guess what? See here? It recognizes 31 on this side, A B into the CPU. Okay. Uh, control C, power off. Power the suit. Discharge the capacitor that's discharged. Now I'm going to go. This is 2, 4. And then six. Mm -hmm. I make the the leap of faith jump to sixty four. Here and latched. Power switch, power button. Turn it in so you can get a better view. Maybe raise the camera just a little bit. Mm. Uh, hold on, and make sure I don't miss the boot menu to turn off the PCIe to turn. To restore E. Uh, PS2 keys are so slow. Uh. I'm just removing a workaround for this board that I have hard set. And it's easier to remove the setting to, to type it in, you know, delete a few times is easier than type it in something that I could type in wrong. So now I'm going to push F10 to boot this. Raise the camera up. And adjust the camera down and get a better view. So now I've installed 216 for 32 on AB, 216s on CD for 32 on the other side. So I should see 32 and 32. D message, oops, MESG. No, no complaints about PCI pneumo node zero like, like I was getting in this board right here. Topo. And it's dropped out of NUMA mode. Now it's in uniform memory axis. Where, when I put four modules into this board, I actually get um, 32 on one side, 32 on the other side, which is exactly what it's plugged into the system. mem and now it's saying 66 gigabytes of RAM which is impossible because there's only 64 D message and it's complaining about the network card being up and down 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 okay this board has issues with memory and CD this is a lot of work to go through and document because gigabyte is irritating their support is so slow. 
they only work with one ticket at a time, even and there's no way to add information to the ticket, they really need to change that. And then they take anywhere from a day or two or three or maybe four to reply to it. In the meantime, you've already tried stuff, and then they're like, hey, try this. I'm like, well, I've already added another ticket saying I tried that, and you guys decided to completely ignore it. So their entire um, scheme, it's not a Ponzi scheme, but it might as well be, is to delay it so long that you can't return the board. I mean, their whole policy is to get you stuck with something that may or may not work for you. And then you're out of money. So, just to prove it, I will install memory from here into that side. Let's check. Yep, still having network link issues. Power off. For the record, this is motherboard number two. This is motherboard number one. You know, different issues with this guy. Then this guy. Now I'm documenting this all because Gigabyte won't believe what I'm doing and won't believe it and so I have to make a video in order for them to see this is all crap. I shouldn't have to do this. They should be more accommodating. This is insane. I'm irritated. I've only got a few hours of sleep. I went to work, came home, got a couple more hours, got back up and now I'm at it again. So, it's been discharged, just making sure power switch is off. Remove the memory. It's over here, because this memory might be a suspect. Let's try. This memory. This memory is in, I mean, look, there is no oxidation, it is all super clean, it's brand new, had it shipped to me, had to sign for it because it was not cheap. This is all a matched test set, it's been tested by Corsair as a matched set. Don't believe me? Here's the box it came in, 128. For the record, I might as well show this. For six memory modules in the manual, they show putting one, two, three, four, and then six, eight for six modules, 96 gigabytes. If you download the PDF file, it's, it, um, it disagrees with the manual. I mean, there's issues with, and I already pointed out, hey look, and it says before you do anything, check the revision of your board. Um, it's covered by plastic. You act, would have to break the plastic off in order to be able to see the revision. You know, they have just lots of stupid little things that they did not bother to research. I mean, their quality is, uh, their support is even worse. So, okay, so two modules. The suspect ones are still, uh, let me loosen this so I can actually, still, these are the ones that are suspect. Swapped it with another two. Voltage. Oops. 1.18. Uh, hello. F3G. Voltage. It went back to auto. Why the hell it did that? I don't know. Is that 2 2? Ten. Have no idea when they decided to change the voltage, but that could be the problem. Okay, 
and now it's at least 2.12 and it's saying here let's go to the uh, simple mode okay, uh, F2 what is the hotkey for that easy mode F2 and then I'm not sure what the is that just a toggle F2 okay so it shows here two four six eight recognizes L16 here probably changed the fan settings didn't it CPU pump no, it kept that. It kept the fan setting, but changed the voltage settings. Okay. Frequency settings. That's still set to auto, 3.5. Uh, advanced core. I mean, as, as generic as you can get. Memory settings. Disabled. Oh, it disabled XMPP. Okay, I want to clock this down to 1.2133. Uh, uh, memory controller. Oh, it reset this back. Disable. Disable. <sighs> what a piece of garbage. I have to go through the process of waiting days in order to get any support because their tier one support is designed to slow everybody down. Okay. Check the voltage settings. Did it keep it? Yes, it did. Did it keep the advanced memory settings? Yes, it did. So let's go over to here and boot this guy. Oh, sh I didn't disable the uh, option inside the... For now... Or I should say, re-enabled the option to disable. Okay, message, hmm, looks like we're having gigabit network up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down prompts, which wasn't, that was topo. But now that I've got the memory intentionally set up, now it's recognizing 32 on one side and 32 on the other. Obviously, this has to do with the power management. The issue with the power management, it's an issue with the power management, I, this is, this is stupid. Why? Why does it keep on underclocking and having issues? Or underclocking, under voltaging the, the memory. It's spec at 1.2 volts. Okay, I mean, I'm documenting this for you guys. How much money am I gonna get out of this? Probably zero. How much reward am I gonna get out of this? I have the fact that I am documenting this all for Gigabyte because their support team, I have no idea. Obviously, this isn't the operating system of their choice. They like Windows, and people like me are probably idiots because, you know, we actually know a thing or two. Um, LS Mim. 66. Still says 66. Where is it getting that extra two? I don't know. The message message I have no idea no idea where it's hitting that so the memory that might be suspect is sitting over there replaced with the other two the chances of actually getting this uh, it's just a stupid so I'm gonna I don't know maybe I should just go through the process of swapping the hardware right in front of you but I'd rather pause the video swap the hardware back to the original motherboard uh, let me try something real quick here. Let me do a uh, reboot. <clears throat> Let me see if it kept the settings. <clears throat> Stupid that I have to get in the bias every single time to verify that it actually didn't reset stuff. System F3G, good. Memory settings. Oops. And what's the voltage? It says. It says 1.21, clock speed, everything. Looks fine. Uh, memory profile settings, channel disable, disable. Uh, let's go over here. Boot override. Edit this. Okay. 
Let's remove this workaround. Let's pin. What I want is a guarantee from somebody that all my hard work isn't going in vain. Tired. The message. Still getting link issues. That's Topo. But it is showing that the memory is correctly configured. 32 on one side, 32 on the other. Let's ignore the, the um, network card at this point. Let's try 96. Power off. Power switch. And power button to discharge the capacitor. Okay. Chassis still has path to ground. Okay, we got this guy. And we got this guy. For those of you who have looked at the printed manual, ignore it. It says to put four in this spot and two in this spot. The PDF manual, which I believe is updated, but says the exactly the same revision number to go in one zero, revision 1001 12 ME one zero one R. PDF says exactly the same thing, but there are differences. PDF version says to put three on this side, three on this side in position two, three, four. Skip five, six, seven, eight. So it's skip one, skip five. This is the 96 gigabyte memory configuration that they suggest. Power switch. Button. Test and CPU. Uh, D0. E3, 1415, C0, B5, testing memory, 33, 55, 36, testing video card met memory, lights on. Thirty-three, fifty-five, thirty-six, twenty-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, seven, ninety-six, ninety-nine, eight, okay. And it recognizes 65 out of it. And I'm assuming that it decided to change all the settings back. So we're currently at F3G, memory settings. Let's check. Now, it looks like it kept the voltage settings. Channel disable, disable. Because the problems that I was experiencing, uh, I believe it was on this board, was I put one module in. Everything's fine. Put two modules in, two and four, and then it started throwing messages. Searching, it, it was talking about the, the messages that were coming up in the system log were related to um, power management features. And there's two power management features in play here. Power management on the PCI bus and power management in memory. Since I'm having a problem with memory, figured to go in and disable that, which gear down mode and power down enable mode is disabled. So you disable something that enables it. Okay. Uh, make sure the fan settings stayed, which I, they should, but just, you know, don't quit without saving. Let's go over to here. Let's speak to this guy. What? Oh, wrong device. It's that guy. Trying to boot to the USB stick that's plugged in there. There's nothing on there. Okay. Mim test. Okay. Config information. C 
64, 65, 4, 5, 3. And the speed looks kind of slow. It's below 10 gigabytes. Uh, SPD view. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So detect 6 doesn't tell you the position. Uh, let's just do a quick quick test to look at the... Whoa! That's not good. I don't see. That's not good. So let's that's just boot. Edit. Remove the workaround. Restore it back to default settings so I can see error messages in the system log F10. If there are, in fact, PCI bus NUMA node issues like in this board. Workarounds are workarounds, they're not solutions, they're workarounds. Plus mem, just curious. 64. This time it detects 64, not 66. What the hell? It, I mean, this is insane. 64 or 66, what is it? This time it's 64. The message. Uh, it looks like it can't decide whether or not to go 1 gigabyte or 100. But... Just looks like the network link messages are actually uh, at least stabilized. It's not going up and down, up and down, up and down. But when it was going up and down, up and down, up and down, it thought there were 66 gigabytes in the system, which is like weird. Now I have 96, and it only is recognizing 64, but the LSMIM is now saying, hey, it's only 64. So put 96 in, you get 64. Put 64 in, you get 66, and you get network link issues. Yeah, okay. LS Topo. Hmm. This guy's saying, if you look here, it's saying there's one 16 gigabyte module on this side and 48 on this side. <clears throat> Okay, there's 48 on this side and 48 on this side. Now the SPD, now this is the same thing as going to the SPD scan inside MemTest 86 7.4, but it's oh, pseudo LS hardware class memory pipe to less and Maximize. Nothing in zero. Something in one. Something in two. Something in three. Nothing in four. Something in five. Something in six. Something at seven. Notice uh, the operating system refers to this as zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, where the manual refers to this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's, uh, it's an off by one. Um, computers start counting from zero. Humans who print manuals and make documentation count from one. So, in any case, oh, let's see, uh, CPU. Looks like it recognizes all 24 threads. I mean, obviously, 128 gigs won't work. Uh, reboot. Wait. 
64, and that's just F2. This guy even says, look, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to stop this video now. This will be number three in the series. Swap the hard back to the motherboard number one and do a lot of the same stuff and document it because I have to go out of my way to prove that there's something wrong. And it could be a BIOS update if they would even say, yeah, we are currently working on implementing a newer AGES -A AMD microcode update. Um, please. Uh, wait we plan to roll it out in the next week if they would even give some information you know it's uh, I work in support and one of the things I've learned over the years is communicate with your customers try to keep them in the loop try to provide them information so they have an understanding um, leave them out in the open you know feeding them you know basically no information doesn't win you customers it's the worst way to treat your customer. So, anyways, I'm going to just power this off and proceed to stop the recording. This will be number three.